So you set up a data source in TinyBird. Now what? Well, it's time to create a pipe. In this screencast, I'll explain what a TinyBird pipe is and how to create and edit them both in the TinyBird UI and the CLI. Let's get to it. First off, what is a pipe? Well, let me explain. Pipes are essentially the transformation layer in TinyBird. With pipes, you can create chained, composable nodes of SQL queries to transform and enrich data from your TinyBird data sources. You can either publish the results as API endpoints or materialize them as new, incrementally updating data sources. With that, let's create a pipe. Okay, to help me get started, I've written a little Python script that's streaming some simple web events data using the TinyBird events API to a data source called web events. You can see this data source has four columns for the action, path name, session ID, and timestamp. Now let's create a pipe to get the conversion rate for each product on a specific day. To get started, click Create Pipe. First things first, I'll give my pipe a name and a description. Down here is the SQL editor for the first node in the pipe, and you can see it's already populated with a select star query from the web events data source. So the way pipes work is that each subsequent node in a pipe can query over the results from prior nodes. When you're done, TinyBird composes and optimizes them into a single query in the background. Pipes let you avoid writing spaghetti queries with a bunch of nested CTEs and subqueries, and there are also some other benefits that I'll show you in a bit. My goal here, again, is to get the conversion rate for a specific product on a specific day. Now I'm going to do this in two nodes. The first will group the total number of different events by product and day, and the second will calculate the conversion rate based on the results from the prior node. So I'll just copy and paste the SQL for the first node for the sake of time, and then you can see the results that I'm getting from that node. Now let me rename this node Total Actions Product Day. Okay, a couple of things to point out here. First, you can see how much data was processed by that node and the time the query took to return a response. This is really useful for finding inefficiencies in your pipes later on so that you can optimize them for better cost and performance. Now, I'll create a second node to query over the results from that prior node to get me the result that I want. So let's write a little SQL to do that. And here are the results. Note that I've used the TinyBird templating language to add some query parameters here because I ultimately intend to publish this as an API endpoint. I'll get into more depth on how to create query parameters in a later screencast. Note, there's some cool features here in the SQL editor. You can expand the editor to full screen, you can search the node, and you can automatically format your query to make it more readable. Now, as I mentioned before, there are two things you can do with pipes. You can publish them as an API endpoint, or you can materialize the results as a new data source. To do either one, you can click the node actions icon by the node name and choose to either create an API endpoint or a materialized view. So that's the basics of pipes in the UI. Let's move over to the CLI so you can see how to create and edit pipes as a part of your deployment workflows. So the first thing I will do is pull this TinyBird data project into a local file directory on my machine. Now I've got a directory in my shell and I've already authenticated and initialized a TinyBird data project. So I will pull the data project resources from the server with TB pull and the auto flag to put everything in the correct folders. So now I have a .data source file, which is that web events data source and a .pipe file. Now there are a couple of ways to create a pipe from the CLI. You can use TB pipe generate and then some SQL, or you can create a .pipe file from scratch. In this case, I'm just going to copy that .pipe file and edit it in VS Code. So here you can see the basic file format for a pipe with each node and its name, description, and query. So let's say we wanted to update this particular node to get the conversion rate not just for a specific day, but for a defined time period. So I'll update the node with some new timestamp filters on query parameters, which I'll call start date and end date, and save the file. And then back in the CLI, I do TB push with the file path. And now if I go back into the UI and refresh, you'll see the new pipe with the changes I made. And that is how to create a pipe in TinyBird using both the UI and the CLI. Happy querying, my friends. <laughs>